truth. And the truth. the truth. First prize is Cadillac, Cadillac, Black Eldorado. Anybody want to see second prize? Set a steak knife. What are you? Some kind of uh, uh, are Hi guys, it's Lainey Glippenstein here. I am Steve. Hi everyone, this is Sylvia Richards. Hey, I'm Chris Behe. I'm a realtor. A broker. I'm a realtor here in Milton. I am a realtor and I'm here today to assess how realistic media portrays real estate. Here we go. Let's see how it goes. I will sell this house today. <laughs> Positive attitude, that's good. Not sure this is approved. I will sell this house today. I will sell this house today. I have my own little chant, not I will sell this house today. I will sell this house today. The little, small, little teeny things like the, the speck on the mirror. It's a dream. Attention to detail is perfect. <laughs> Just filled with positive energy, huh? Reminds me of reading the descriptions. Just a surprise how much a ceiling fan can cut down on your energy costs. The ad said this pool was lagoon like. There's nothing lagoon like about it, <laughs> except for maybe the bugs. There aren't even any plants out here. What do you call this? Is this not a plant? And she did not lock the door. She looks dejected at the end of her day. <laughs> Sometimes you feel like this, yes. I feel for her because like it's it's kind of what I go through sometimes like before getting into like an open house you're like oh, yeah I'm gonna sell this I've got all this you know like energy and hype and then you get in there you do your thing and then depending on how it goes sometimes like you get back into your car and you're like oh, <laughs> I wish that went better that's not what I had in mind. Bang on with the description. It's hilarious reading some of the descriptions. What you read and what you see is very different, as well as the pictures. One of the first things I hear all the time from people is, oh, I was a little bit deceived by the pictures. But the one thing that's very, very true, the amount of work that goes into prepping a home. We typically wear, you know, sweats and comfortable clothes, not high heels and negligee, but. Going above and beyond to making the home look perfect. Attention to detail is key, of course. She thought the kitchen was spectacular. The buyers walking through did not agree. So that's very realistic, actually. She was preparing for an open house. It was great. She actually got her hands dirty and did a little bit of work. Probably should have done a little bit of that before she got there for an open house or outsourced it. Maybe paid a cleaning company to come through. She gave guided tours, maybe a little bit over the top. It sounded like she might have over-described the property in the description. I guess on a scale of one to 10, I don't know, I'd give it maybe like a five or six. Out of 10, I'd give that a six. How realistic is this? I think it's pretty realistic. I'd give it an eight. Overall, pretty accurate-ish. I'll give it seven and a half. Oh, right, he's a realtor. You don't get to be two-time non-consecutive district salesman of the year without thinking inside the box. That's right. Inside the I box. I said inside. You know why? Because while everyone's chasing each other around outside the box, you know what the box is? Empty. Which brings us back to our formal dining room. Now, any questions? Can we oh. have our candy now? Just as soon as we go over what you're going to tell your parents. And what was our style? Yes, yeah, some realtors will try to sell to everybody. Absolutely. Good. How many square feet? 3,500. Uh, kids, I'd be a little scared on what the kids would tell their parents, but that's kind of a creative tactic. Qualify your buyers. Number one, if you're talking to somebody who has no interest in what you're selling, their face is gonna glaze over and they're not gonna be interested at all. And you're gonna be wasting your time whether you work inside the box or outside the box. I think actually that's a pretty cool idea. Buying a home, I guess, is an emotional process. So when you have your kids with you, what might appeal to the kids, you might have not thought of. I love his character, but getting kids to sell their parents in real estate, maybe not a bad idea if the kids are there, but you want the parents there too. I would probably give it realism, probably like a three or four, <laughs> yeah. A little bit more realistic that, uh, a lot of realtors just kind of show up and throw up and they, they use their pitch no matter who will listen to them. So I'd give that eight out of 10. 
I rate that one a six. So I'm gonna give that two and a half. Let me just wipe the sink. Let's Why see, even give that? her an option for it? <laughs> it's unbelievable. This is the pilot, way back. How's the real estate business? It's uh, not bad, it's coming along. <laughs> Why, did you need something? You handle any of that commercial woo, real estate? <laughs> Well, I might be getting into that. You keep me posted. I'm aware of you. All right, let's go. <laughs> let's go. Clearly a friend asking another friend about real estate. Probably not in the market to purchase commercial real estate. As soon as somebody finds out you're in real estate, first question you get asked, how's the market? Market's great. No matter what's happening, always a time to buy, always a time to sell. There's always opportunity. Um, regardless of who they are, friend, family, or somebody I just, I don't completely know, you never know where it's gonna go, so. I think George probably could have had a better response to how the real estate market is. That is the number one question we get all the time as agents, and you wanna make sure you have a quick but informative response for that. I rate that one nine, it's very realistic. I think the scenario of like the friend, you know, like the, oh, how's real estate going? That's very, very realistic. Like I get that all the time. So I would probably give that like a six or seven. I will say it is nine and a half out of accuracy and George's response, I will give three and a half. That question, very accurate. I'd say nine out of 10. Uh-huh. The rich get richer, that's the law of the land. Who belongs to the BM? Old school selling. It is 7.30. So who is that? I think I might have seen this in school. Where is Mr. Ron? <laughs> well, I'm not a leash, so I don't know, do I? This isn't one of the best movies ever. I don't know moment. what is. Cause you're talking about what? You're talking about- Oh my God, he's so young in this. <laughs> bitching about that sale you shot. Some son of a bitch don't want to buy land. Somebody don't want what you're selling. Some broad and trying to- Doesn't matter what you did yesterday. Let's talk about something important. What are you doing today? All, here. All but one. Well, I'm going anyway. Let's talk about something important. Put that coffee down. Coffee's for closers only. <laughs> I'm here for Mitch and Murray. And I'm here on a mission of mercy. Do you call yes, hot shot comes, comes in and everybody oohs and ahs. That's very accurate. I don't gotta listen to this shit. You certainly the don't. HR would have, uh, have a quite the field day these days. The bad news is you've got all you've got just one week, starting with tonight's sit. As you all know, first prize is a Cadillac Eldorado. Anybody want to see second prize? Second prize is set of sticks. Seven times. Third prize is you're fired. You got leads. Mitch and Murray paid good money. Get their names to sell them. You can't close the leads you're given. You can't close shit. You are shit. Hit the bricks, pal, and beat it, because you are going out. The leads are weak. The leads are weak. Fucking Always an excuse, boy. Are weak. You are weak. I've been in this business 15 years. What's your name? Fuck you. That's my name. <laughs> you know why, mister? Because you drove a Hyundai to get here tonight. I drove an $80,000 BMW. That's my name. Only one thing counts in this life. Get them to sign on the line which is dotted. A. B, C, always A, B always B, B, C, closing, always be closing, always be closing. Some people do well with this, where you are now is not where you should be kind of thing. I take to that well, I guess motivation. Some people take it well and some people are like, oh no, that doesn't, doesn't even resonate with them, right? Real estate, I would say there's a lot of people like that. I get tired of the word hustle. I think hustle is overused, but you know, a lot of people don't want to be told to hustle. They just want to, you know, kind of do their thing, and then they're going to complain why they're not a top producer, they're not, uh, you know, top of their game or top of their area or something like that. But nobody likes to be pushed, and that's what this guy's doing is pushing. As a mentor, especially to new real estate agents, having somebody like that come in, it would be a little belittling. He's yelling at them, he's being very aggressive at them, but that works for some, that little kick in the butt uh, to get you going. And when he was talking about leads, yeah, leads are there, but if you're not gonna do anything with them, you gotta be persistent. And yeah, they're out there, you just gotta do your work. And we all know real estate never sleeps, so it's not a nine to five, it's a 24 seven.
I don't think you can get away with it today. Different type of real estate. They're selling land, development, prospects in America in the early 1990s. Totally different market than today. There might be a place for it back then. Might be a place for it in different industries. We don't really have a place for that today, though. Definitely have some good takeaways from there. ABC, anyone in sales has heard that before. But what I take away from that anyways is always be closing yourself, presenting yourself in a manner that you want to attract and you want to portray. Out of 10, um, I like this. So I don't know, I give it like a seven or eight. It really got to me or spoke to me, right? I think if we were in the if we were in the 80s, eight or nine right now, no, I mean, you wouldn't get away with a lot of this stuff right now. Uh, I'd say maybe six or seven. I'm sure there's some environments where that's where it is, but I don't know how many people would operate well under that environment. I would give this one an eight. Realistic, I can't even grade it, but movie, 10 out of 10. I am so sorry, Phil, that I wasted your whole day, but I am more sorry of what I'm gonna do to your car! Sorry, we're above that, but not everyone would be. You should uh, put that beauty in your garage. I don't have one. Oh, really? Just out of curiosity, do you not have a garage because you converted it into the guest house where your grandson's currently showering? What's your game, mister? Exactly. I just find it interesting that you have yep. a fully plumbed standalone dwelling on your property. That's none of your business. Even more peculiar, your grandson appears to live here, but judging by his t-shirt, he goes to Eden Mills High. An elite public school. A salesperson, always a salesperson. Oh, maybe with the money you saved on private schools, you paid for the new two-sided brick fireplace I saw, which hasn't been legal since 1988. Go, <laughs> go! Pull the sauce, Big Al. <laughs> or Monday morning. The city's here with a bulldozer and your grandson goes to a school with a metal detector. How do you know all this? What are I'm you, some kind of real estate agent? <laughs> oh, he's a realtor. There is a difference somehow. Oh, I love it. I, I think from this short scene, you can tell like he, he pays attention. He mentioned the fireplace that's outdated, the t-shirt of her grandson, the fact that the garage is converted into a dwelling because there's a really nice car sitting outside versus in the garage. I love that. I think that's a really good trait, especially as a realtor, to pay attention to those details because those details are going to help you kind of get a better intuition or insight into whether it's the person, the client themselves, or what they're looking for. And it just makes your process that much easier, right? When you know exactly what they want because people tell you oh I want this I want that but then really when it push comes to shove and you, you put that in front of them they're just the reaction you can tell it's not really what they want so paying attention to that it's a huge thing the newer realtors once you've finished your studying once you've gotten your accreditation and your license yes you know everything about everything this is a four level back split this is a bungalow this is a two-star yeah, that's, that's pretty accurate, I would say, depending on the point of the realtor's career they're at. As a realtor, you have to know your stuff, the homes you're showing, but also the neighborhood, what's around. I love this. Phil is on the ball. He was observant. He knew all the local bylaws. Out of 10, realistically, I think I'd give it like a six. Seven out of 10. I like this one. I think it's pretty realistic. I'd give it a seven out of 10. For his knowledge, I'm gonna give Phil Dunphy a uh, 10 out of 10. Red I had a lot of calls about you. Customers love your no pressure approach. Well, like we say, the right house for the right person. Listen, it's time I let you in on a little secret, Marge. The right house is the house that's for sale. The right person is anyone. But all I did was tell the truth. Of course you did, but there's the truth. And the truth. The truth. The truth. <laughs> Let me show you. It's awfully small. I'd say it's awfully cozy. That's dilapidated. Rustic. That house is on fire. Motivated seller. Of The Simpsons, Marge gets her real estate license. I would say this is actually pretty accurate. Many agents try to oversell their listings through descriptions. You see the same verbiage over and over again. Don't necessarily agree with it. I think that you should represent a property the way it is, but we definitely see this all the time in the uh, in the industry. Read the listings. I mean, if there's 10 listings that are released in a day, eight or nine of them are okay. gonna use things like, it's a cozy home, it's a renovator's dream, it's your whatever. So yeah, that, that one's very, very accurate, I would say in a lot of listings. I'm with Marge on this one. I think he's trying to force Marge into thinking a certain way. You have to be honest. You have to be honest with your clients. If they feel that for whatever reason, this home is not what they're looking for, you can't push that on them. They have to be comfortable. You have to know what your clients are looking for. You have to be honest upfront. And at the end of the day, you're working on behalf of your, your client. 
out of 10, I guess I give it a six or seven. I give this a 10 out of 10. <laughs> From March's perspective, I would say a nine out of 10. Simpsons, it's the Simpsons. I'm gonna give it 10 out of 10. Home sweet home. Which one's yours? Right there. My sanctuary, my party pad. Someday I can just see my grandkids learning how to walk out here. Hang on, swing from this tree, push them back. Wait, no, it's this one from here. <laughs> home sweet home. This, my friends, cookie is cutter neighborhood, maybe? The master bedroom. Check out the cathedral ceilings. Those are like 17 feet high. We have cable readiness right there. I am going to totally pimp this place out. I'm going to put a surround sound system. I'm going to put a plasma screen right against this Ooh, wall. Oh, terrible I'm idea. putting my bed right over no, here. No, 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 no. This is a shared wall. <sighs> Neighbor throws his wife into the wall. Plasma screen hits the floor, totally smashed. <laughs> well, then I will get a warranty. Warranty you don't cover it, plus you're a rip -off. Well, then I won't get a warranty. Which, so that's you know how this is accurate? What? You create emotion. <laughs> I mean, obviously to the extreme. Oh, man. These babies are thin. <laughs> And then I just need you to sign here at this era. What kind of mortgage did you get? Yes, there's lots of paperwork. Uh, ten lots year. and lots and lots of paperwork. Well, 10 over 30, so 30 year total. What? What? You said 10. 10 year fixed. 10 year fixed rate. He over is 30, getting 30 screwed. Year total. <laughs> 30 years. Okay, okay. Wow, you'll be paying this off in your mid 70s. Right. <laughs> Forget about retiring when you're 65. Hey, I have an idea. You know that extra bedroom? If the whole girlfriend thing never happens, that's where the nurse can live. Okay, all right. <laughs> <sighs> oh, yeah, this is it. Whenever you're ready. Yeah. Um. Oh. oh okay. Is that supposed to come off? Hey, look, cool. Actually, yeah. Carpenter ants. Um. I'm gonna take a little uh, breather for a second. Oh, excuse excuse me. some buyer's remorse. It'll be here waiting for you. Oh man. A 30-year mortgage at Michael's age essentially means that he's buying a coffin. If I were buying my coffin, I would get one with thicker walls so you couldn't hear the other dead people. <laughs> Not bad advice. Ooh. Whenever you're ready, Michael. Oh. The ceilings are lower than they were last week. That, I don't... I don't know if you showed me what? this same unit or not. And is this a financial thing? If it's a financial thing, what some people do is they rent out the third bedroom. No, and that's no, some extra no, 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 no. income for you. I am not you. going to rent the third bedroom. bedroom. I want to a professional eye handle. <laughs> walk. You will lose $7,000 if you walk away right now. I made the right decision. I'm glad I signed. $7,000 is nothing compared to what we're dealing with now. <laughs> Having friends and family along for the ride could be a good thing or a bad thing, kind of. I would probably advise not to in the beginning. <laughs> Misery loves company. <laughs> people like assurances or yes people to validate what they're thinking, what they're doing. In this case, was it a good idea? No, nope. but a lot of people do it. What I got from that one is just the pressure. Feeling under pressure to have to purchase a home because he needs a home. In his case, he felt really under pressure. The ceilings all of a sudden seemed shorter. He started noticing things that he didn't notice before. Looks like he was signing the final paperwork for his purchase. He put a deposit down on it. Only $7,000, that is mind blowing. Usually around here, we wanna see at least 5%. You know, it's not common for someone to bring along a family member. It's good to get a second opinion, provided they are a positive person and qualified to give advice. He was getting regret on the purchase. You see that quite a bit from people. I don't think his reaction was entirely uncommon, although it was a little bit more dramatic maybe than, than most people. Out of 10, um, at six, seven, I guess. Yeah, pretty realistic, yeah. You have to deal with a lot of up and down and a lot of emotion. I would rate that 8 out of 10. Realistically, I think it's probably, I would rate it a 4 from my point of view. Probably, no, not even, a, probably a 3. Only because you you never want to pressure, never want to pressure somebody into purchasing something that they, they don't want to purchase. I like the scene, I will give it an 8 and a half. Anything media, right? It's it's entertainment. The more entertaining it is, the more appealing it's going to be to a lot of people. I don't think it's 
very accurate. I think there's a lot of sensationalism. There's a lot of hype that's built up. You know, you can pull things that are accurate, but you got to read between the lines quite often for sure. Media is there to be comforting to people, entertainment to watch. It may not necessarily portray <laughs> what is actually going on in the community. What might be realistic to me is obviously not realistic to people that live in Beverly Hills. Everyone has different expectations, everyone has different standards, and we're all looking for different things and hopefully in the end we all find them, but in just in different ways. I guess they're trying to perceive real estate as something that will sort of sell itself. You don't have to work for it. If there's a house um, on the market, it'll sell regardless. So all of that is very unrealistic. Depending on the media you're looking at, it's definitely gonna be over dramatized, have to sell it a little bit. So overall, I would say it is pretty mixed on how it's represented. You really got to kind of take bits and pieces from what you're, what you're watching. And of course, it's entertainment purpose only. Thanks guys for joining us. Thanks for watching everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope you enjoyed these clips. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you had fun. I know I did. I hope you have a great day. See you soon. Have a great day. Bye. Goodbye.